everybody, this is Jason out here in Colorado. Today I'm going to show you how to make cordage using the yuck, narrow leaf yucca, which is this plant right here behind me. Uh, this nice spiny plant here. Uh, narrow leaf yucca grows from about 4,000 feet up to about 7,500 feet in elevation. Uh, there are different options out here in Colorado to use to make cordage. Um, we've got the narrow leaf yucca, we've got willow bark, we've got uh, pine root. We've got um, stinging nettle, we've got um, dogbane, and there's a bunch of other ones. The nice thing about narrow leaf yucca is that it's available all year long. While a lot of plants will die and wither during the winter, this yucca plant stays just how it is even through winter. Um, it is pretty woody and fibrous. Uh, you'll see here as I'm processing it. Uh, it does take a little bit of work to get going on it, to get uh, down to where you can get the fibers out and make the cordage. But once you're done, it is probably some of the strongest cordage that you can find out there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest some of the leaves. Uh, I never want to try to harvest the entire plant because it just kills it, obviously. So I'll find an area that's got several uh, plants and I'll take a few leaves from each plant. Uh, you're going to cut it down near the base of each leaf. Uh, you do have to be careful because the, the ends of those are quite sharp and they'll, they'll go through you just like a needle would. I mean, pick the longest leaves that you can find. Uh, it makes it so you can get a longer run. I'm going to go ahead and cut some off of this, this plant right here behind me and show you what it looks like up close. Okay, so here's, here's one leaf, there's the base I cut off, and then it comes up to this nice point. Uh, you can use this as a needle and thread if you uh, were in a pinch and needed to sew something together. But otherwise, while I'm making this for cordage, I'm just going to snap that off. Make it so I don't stab myself. It's really not very much fun. Okay, so you can see this is pretty woody. Um, it doesn't really bend too easily until we work it a little bit more. I mean, I mean it doesn't have some bend to it, but it's not gonna be good for rope. So what you gotta do is different methods. Um, if you have the ability to boil these, uh, it makes these really easy to work. We're not gonna always be able to boil them out in the field, so you gotta find a different way to process that. Uh, the best way I found, or one way I found, I guess you should say, is to take and find a hard surface, uh, a tree stump or a log or something, and you, with your knife, uh, press this down on that tree stump and then just pull this back. Uh, but ne never put your thumb over top of this and rake it back because these little fibers in here, they are strong enough. They'll go right through your flesh and you'll have a pretty horrible splinter. And that's no fun. Nobody wants that. Uh, just to show you real quick, you know, I got a piece of wood here. I'm going to take this piece of wood and use it as my base. And then I'm going to take my knife it's going to be a little hard here, working like this so you can see it. But I'm just push this down against uh, that piece of wood, and I'm going to rake it back. Let's see, yeah, you can see me. So you are going to rake this back and just flatten this out. You can also push the knife forward easier in this situation. But if we got a nice big piece of wood, this is a lot easier to do. And you're just going to break up these fibers. You, you got some meat, some flesh on the outside, and the inside are these little tiny fibers, and they go the full length of this leaf, and that's what we want. So that's one way you can do it. Another way, depending on what kind of knife you have on the back side, you can use the back side of the knife to rub this back and forth to break up those fibers. You can see here, I'm already started to get this pulled apart. This does take time, but when you're done, you'll be pretty satisfied with the outcome. So there's one way to do it. Another way is you can chew these. It's a lot of work, a lot on your teeth. You don't really want to do that. Um, you can, if you got a really meaty part, you can bang on it with the back side of your knife. Whatever it takes to, to break up this fiber. Uh, another thing you can do is get two flat rocks and pinch it between those two flat, flat rocks and bang it together. Again, anything you can do to get these fibers broken up long ways 
without severing them this way because you want them as long as you possibly can get them. So I'm going to go ahead and start working. Uh, I'll gather some more of these, these yucca leaves up and I'm going to start working on making some uh, fibers for you to see and then we'll wrap them together. Um, you are going to bend these in half. So you're going to go through this pretty quick. So this piece right here isn't going to make this long of a piece of rope. It's going to make actually a little bit less than this because once you start twisting it it's going to make it shrink down a little bit so for what an 18 inch piece you might get nine inches the quarter cordage out of it so you're going to need to collect quite a bit of this to make anything a uh, reasonable size rope all right it took me a little while but i got a bunch of fibers here that i worked out i can work these down further if i want but you can see i got this all broken up um, this was probably about 10 or so leaves um, but you can see again those little fibers that are inside. That's what I I'm going to use for the rope. I'm going to take a handful and I want to try to make these an even length um, with no really weird stragglers coming out. So we'll try to get these all one length on one side. Um, this is right here is going to make a pretty good sized rope. Uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll go ahead and go with that so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the reverse twist method. What you're going to do is you're going to grab on one side and mm -hmm. grab on the other and right near the center. So we're on, you know, we're in the middle of this and I'm going to roll this away from me. If you're, I'm right handed, so I'm rolling it with my right hand. It's, it's reversed for you, but I'm going to roll this with my right hand. And kind of force it to kink up. You see that little roll there? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make, grab that roll and then with my left hand I'm going to pinch that roll and you can see I've got a top I got a bottom and grab the top piece and I'm going to twist it away from me in that direction just like that until that tightens up. I'll pull my hand away here a little bit so you can see better. So that tightens up but I'm going to get right down in here close so that's the top now I'm going to grab the bottom piece with this hand, this finger here, and I'm going to flip it back up towards me. And then once I get it flipped up, I'm going to pinch further up on this piece of cordage. Now again, the top, I'm going to roll the top away from me, roll it till it's tight. Some people say roll it twice, I just roll it till it's tight, and grab the bottom and flip it back, and then work my fingers mm -hmm. up here. Top piece, roll away from me, grab the bottom, flip up. Take your time on doing this at first. It takes a little practice. It's not going to look pretty at first. And then just keep going mm -hmm. on this. And you can try to make these uniform by always using the same amount of, of yucca. Um, usually the, your first section is going to be more narrow than the rest because you got to splice in and add stuff to it. But I'll show you how to splice in here in a little bit. So I'm just going to keep going. You can see what I got going there. It's a little tough on my hands. My hands cramp up a little bit when I'm doing this. but. Might not be that way for everybody. As you can see, probably you're counting. I'm counting my head. I'm rolling twice because it's what it's taken to get it tight. There we go. All right, now what I do is when I've got two to three inches of, we'll call it the tail here, the piece that's not worked, and I've got that much. I'm going to see how I got the top and the bottom. I'm going to take another piece of, of yucca and I'm going to splice it in there. I'll use a little bit less than I did on that first roll because this bit is going to be added into all this. If I use a lot, if I use the same amount, it's going to be twice as thick. So I'm just going to grab a little bit on this one, line up these edges. I'm going to roll these a little bit so we can break it down a little bit more here. Okay, so these are about the same length here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this. Well, let me flip this so these are more even here. 
don't know if you saw what I did there, but I had on this end, it was pretty thick, and on this end it was kind of wispy. So I tore it in half and flipped half of it around, so I got fat and wispy on this end and fat and wispy on this end to make it more consistent. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so all I'm gonna do is grab this in the center and just fold it, just lay it on there. Nothing special, just lay it so it's halfway, half of it is on the top and half is on the bottom. I need to straighten that a little bit more. Now I'm just gonna continue on. Nothing fancy, I just folded it in between those existing two pieces and continued on. So now that original four inches of cordage that I made, I'm going to continue on to make it into probably another four inches. So now I got eight inches of cordage. Eight inches of cordage. What am I going to do with eight inches of cordage? I could tie something to my pack. I could use it possibly for a Paiute deadfall. Um, really, eight inches isn't a whole lot, but you can use it for something. But I've gone up to 20 feet of rope using this. I'm in one segment and it's really quite strong all right so now i got that a little bit more um, this is starting to thin out so i'm going to go ahead and grab another piece from the stuff that i've worked Again, straighten these out so this this side and this side are about the same length. Nothing really wispy hanging out, and try to make it so it's about as thick. The thickness on this side is as thick as it is on this side. And again, just see I'm holding it in the center and just lay it in there. Nothing fancy, and then continue on. Not too pretty right there, but that's all right. All right, so when I got about, about a foot there, I can keep going, um, I'll probably do some off, off camera and then come back, but I mean, that's pretty strong right there. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around and I'm gonna start a new piece and show you that roll so you can see what it's gonna look like from your view rather than looking at me. So give me a minute to, to set things up and I'll, and I'll be back and show you uh, your own perspective on how to make this cordage. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make this cordage from, from your perspective here. So I, you see I've got this length of yucca. Um, it's pretty even on both sides. It's not really thin over here and really thick over here. If it were, I would grab half of it so that, and then just flip it around the opposite direction so that it makes it more even. All right, so what I'm going to do is grab it right in the center and I'm going to roll this this direction until this kinks up and kind of force it to kink it up see that kink I'm going to grab that with my left hand if you're if you're left-handed you're going to do it differently I'm right-handed so you grab it the other way now this is the top piece this is the bottom piece I'm going to grab the top and I'm going to turn it this way spin it this way and grab closer but just so you can see which way I'm turning it I'm going that direction so I'm gonna pinch up in here I'm gonna spin it grab the bottom with my other hand and I'm gonna turn it back and then I'm gonna move my finger up just a little bit the bottom when I flipped around became the top so I'm gonna grab it the top again spin it grab the bottom flip around make the bottom the top spin it grab the bottom and make it the top. It's a little harder with the camera in my way here, but I'm trying to 
get you to see what it looks like from your side. Facing me makes it a little bit difficult. So I'm just going to keep working this. And you can see I'm kind of doing one, two, and then flipping it back. One, two, flip it back. One, two, flip it back. Because you want that tight. The tighter you get that, the better. Um, another thing is if you do boil this yucca or if you find that it's really moist, you're going to let it dry out for a little bit. Because if it's wet when you make cordage, um, that's really a big deal when you're using like dog's bane or maybe willow bark or anything that's got a lot of moisture in it. It'll shrink up as it dries and then your cordage will be a little weird once it dries out. Okay, so there I've got, you know, I got a little bit here, a little here left over. That's where I'm gonna splice it in. So there's my top, there's my bottom. All I'm gonna do is grab another piece um, that's about, you know, maybe a little bit less than what we got here. It just depends on how consistent you want your cordage to be. So there's a new piece. I'm gonna take this piece and splice it in to what I've already got started. So make sure they're even again so it's not thicker up here as it is down there and I'm just going to lay it in here. Grab about right in the center and just lay it on there and then just continue on. Nothing fancy. You make this rope as thick or as thin as you want it, depending on what you got to do. Um, I carry 200 feet of paracord in my pack because you know it probably takes, depending on what kind of shelter you build, it takes you know 40 feet of cordage to make a, a shelter. Um, you know, you can use it for fishing line or all sorts of stuff. And it's way easier than sitting here and making this stuff. This takes you quite a bit of time. But if you don't have cordage or you don't want to waste your cordage, your paracord on, uh, uh, say, you're doing a bunch of Paiute deadfalls, um, you can kick out a bunch of this stuff in no time. But there's there's a stretch of it. Pull on that. It's kind of hard since it's so short. But it's pretty strong. There's your cordage. It's all it takes. Um, a little bit of practice and it'll start coming out looking better. Um, this one isn't perfect, but you get the idea. Keep practicing on it and you can get your rope to look pretty good. So that's how you make some cordage out of narrow leaf yucca. Hopefully you learned something how to do it. Uh, that's the reverse twist method. There are other ways to do it, but that's usually what I use out here in the field. It's really quick, pretty easy for me. And I prefer using yucca because we have so much of it at the lower elevation and it's really, really strong. Um, stay tuned if you, if you enjoy the videos, uh, subscribe and uh, check out what else we got going on. Thanks and I hope you have a great day.